Hi everyone and welcome to Shaluso. Now today, we're going to be talking about my 5 alternatives to the Patek Philippe Nautilus. It's one of the most sought after watches right now and it currently trades for well over double its retail price. And to put that into perspective, it retails for 29,000 US dollars. So it wasn't exactly cheap to begin with. So today we're going to look at 5 alternatives to it. And of course, as like I did with my Royal Oak video, I'm not going to be mentioning the Royal Oak or the Vacheron Constantin overseas because they're too obvious and I want to give you some alternatives that will actually end up being properly cheaper as well and that perhaps you hadn't considered before. But let's start out with what these contenders are up against. The Nautilus 5711 traces its roots back to 1976. Designed by Gerald Genta as a response to his own design for Audemars Piguet with the Royal Oak, Patek Philippe decided to commission him to design the Nautilus. And arguably the years have been kinder to the Nautilus. While the Royal Oak on the pre-owned market will sell for maybe a little bit over its retail price, the margin isn't anywhere near as big as it is for the Nautilus, which is selling for roughly about 50,000 US dollars. So about a $20,000 price increase because of its scarcity and because of the high demand. Now the watch itself, it's all stainless steel with an integrated bracelet, 100 meter water resistance. And on the inside, they've actually recently updated the movement. Before it was the caliber 324-SC, and now it's been upgraded to the caliber 26-330SC. The main changes to this Patek Philippe seal caliber are that they made a few changes to the gearing, they're now Leica etched gears, to allow for a smoother sweep on the second hand, and also it now has hacking seconds. So now Patek Philippe has finally allowed the Nautilus's movement to match that of a watch that's probably worth about as much as one of its bracelet links. That being said though, it is still unfortunately only pin sleeves in those bracelet links, so Patek Philippe still knows how to cost cut, even no matter how cheap it is. But anyway, regardless of what you think about some of its quirks, it is still one of the most desired watches. So let's take a look at what's bringing the fight to the Patek. And the first one we've got is the Glasuta Original Panorama Date. Now Glasuta Original is a German watchmaker that traces its roots back to 1845, the company originally established by Ferdinand Lange, the same Lange that's used as part of A Lange und Sonne. So that company was established in the 90s as part of a rebirth for, um, for that particular company, but La Suta Original actually traces its roots back to the original company. And they make a variety of watches, but the one that really takes the fight to the Patek is the Panorama Date. It features, of course, the traditional German Big Date, so it's got two discs showing the date as opposed to the one that's on most Swiss watches. And on the inside, you have a manufacturer movement, the caliber 39-47, beautifully decorated in traditional German style with a nice gold rotor to it as well to give it that luxury feel and it should have that luxury feel. This watch costs $11,000 so it is obviously a lot cheaper than the Patek but it is still a pretty expensive watch for just being a three-hander with a date. Its design is really unique, it sort of a, looks kind of like a TV from from the 50s but that's the vibe it's going for and it's and that was the style that was really prominent in the 70s which is of course when the Patek was released but it's not completely aping the design you can tell it's not something derivative it's just something original of that time period and it looks beautiful today all made in stainless steel still carries 100 meter water resistance so definitely the same utility that you would get out of the Patek now the next on the list is a watch that also has its lineage in Genta design albeit not directly and that's the Bulgari Octofinissimo. Now, Bulgari has a lot of history with uh, Gerald Genta as they actually absorbed the Gerald Genta watch company and Gerald Genta actually did design a few watches for them directly. The Octo wasn't directly designed by him, however you can see the influences in that octagonal design. It's still got that sort of porthole motif and just the level of facets on it is amazing. It's 110 facets, differing from the 52 odd that there are on the, on the Octo Roma. So it's a really detailed watch and all in sandblasted titanium. But of course the highlight of this watch is that it is the thinnest automatic watch in existence. It broke the record in 2016 at 5.15 millimeters and the movement itself is 2.23 millimeters thick. And that doesn't mean that it's not advanced. It still has a platinum micro rotor which is obviously being a more dense and more, and more weighty material, the most efficient way to make it run and it still has 50 hours of power reserve, so it actually beats out the Patek, despite the Patek having an upgraded movement. So it's nothing to raise your nose to, it's a beautiful watch with a lot of new technology, and with that tiny, tiny thickness, 
and being made in titanium, it's also going to feel really light on the wrist, which adds a lot of versatility to it. But obviously that does come at a cost, it's water resistance is a paltry 30 meters, so not exactly something you're going to be taking swimming. So maybe that knocks down its versatility, but it's still a mean contender. And at $13,000, it does bring a lot to the party compared to the Patek in a lot of departments. Now the next watch on the list is a watch that receives a fair bit of criticism for being derivative of the Patek, but you need to consider that this, this still comes from that same time period, or at least it traces its roots back to it, and that's the Piaget Polo S. Now this current model wasn't designed right in the 70s, but it is a design that's based on watch that Piaget has been making since roughly that time period. But that being said, obviously you take a look at it, and it looks like the one night stand between a Nautilus and an Aquanaut. Now some might say that's a problem, others might say, hey, is that really a bad thing? It looks like a mix of two really nice watches. I'll leave you to decide on that, but you can't deny the Piaget's pedigree and quality. At 9.4 millimeters thick, so obviously nowhere near the crazy thinness of the Octo Finissimo, and that's still with an in-house caliber, the 1110P, which is loosely based on the Cartier 1904 MC. So it's a nice in-house movement, albeit with some inspiration from another movement, but the catch here is that it's only $9,000 US dollars. So it's a lot cheaper than the other alternatives that I've mentioned before, and it still brings a lot to the party, and it has that distinct look that you look for when you're looking at something like a Nautilus. So if you're going directly for that look and you don't have twenty dollars or even $10,000 to spend, this could be a viable alternative. It's available in a lot of different colors, including they just released a green version, which aren't available with the with the Patek, so it also offers a few different options that the Nautilus doesn't. But for argument's sake, let's say you don't actually like the look of the Nautilus itself, but you want something in that sector. What can you get? Well, Omega may have an answer with their Constellation. The Griffin Claw Constellation has been a staple of the Omega catalog since the 70s and 80s, so it stands to reason, of course, it's been a competitor to the Patek since then, it will still be one now, despite having only a $6,000 asking price. But don't let that fool you. This integrated bracelet watch still carries a lot of punch on the inside. Its manufacture movement features Omega's coaxial technology, which they've been putting in all of their in-house movements, and that allows for less friction and also better accuracy and long-term accuracy, as well as less long-term wear. So it makes it more reliable and more versatile. On top of that, it's the only watch on this list that's also been COSC certified. So it actually has proven accuracy from a third party, as opposed to just claims made by the manufacturer. And with a 60 hour power reserve, it's also the most useful if you have it in a rotation because you don't have to wind it as much. So all of that packed into a watch that costs only $6,000, it leaves you plenty of money to spend on a few other watches with the margin that you get, compared to what you would spend on the Patek even if you manage to get it at retail. That said though, I can understand if maybe its design is a little bit polarizing, but I'd say that's largely the point and it's still a great watch that has a lot of history behind it and definitely something that'll start a conversation, probably even start more conversations than the Nautilus would because it's not something you see very often. And then last but not least is a watch that probably is the most conventional of these watches, if you can really say that, but it still has a really unique shape to it and a lot of elegance, and that is the Cartier Ballon Bleu. Now this watch with its weird cover over its crown has a really distinctive look and it's something that adds a lot of class when you look at those beautiful Roman numerals and the detailing on the dial itself is one of the best elements of it. It's something that Cartier does really well because they have these multi-layered different finished dials so it's not so much just about the bracelet which is usually the emphasis for a lot of these watches, it, a lot of it is more happening on the dial itself. That and of course the original case shape that it has mean it's something that will still stand out on your wrist but in a much classier way, and it's something that I feel that Cartier does really, really well. And on the inside, it's not that bad either. Lately, Cartier has been putting a lot of emphasis on shifting away from its ETA source movements, and that continues with the Ballon Bleu. On the inside, you have the caliber 1847 MC, which features a 42-hour power reserve, so still pretty conventional, it matches what the Patek has, but obviously because it's not decorated to anywhere near the level that the Patek has, it's also not on display, and that's something that I've mentioned in other videos in the past. If it's not a crazy movement, there's no point in showing it. So I like that Cartier still took the classy route in covering it up instead of trying to display something that maybe wasn't their best finished movement, but still competent, and at $6,500, it's not a bad option either. Again, it leaves you a lot of margin to build the rest of your collection around. But let me know in the comments below which of these you like most, and what other alternatives you could find to the Patek. 
Or would you simply save and wait, put yourself on a waiting list to buy at retail or spend double to get one on the used market? Do you think it's really worth it? Obviously this is luxury, so at the end of the day, luxury and pricing are usually very relative to your means and to your taste. But in my opinion at least, I think these are some great contenders that you can get without having to break the bank on them. And also I feel that at the end of the day, by being off the beaten path, they'll in the long term be a little bit more interesting than something that clearly has become a cultural phenomenon. But let me know what you think in the comments below and also let me know what other lists of alternatives you'd like to see in the future. And if you like the video, please do like it and share it. And if you like the content that I've been putting out, then please do subscribe to the channel as I put new videos out every week. And last but not least, of course, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.